make me wanna talk back Talk back to you Say you say you like that If I hate you then find some Hey y'all, uh, Stephanie Andre here, and today's video will consist of me giving tips on how I grow my hair long and healthy, aka how I retain length. So let's get into it. Focus, focus, Is it focus. There we go. Okay, the first thing I want to mention is it does not cost a lot of money to maintain natural hair. Now, yes, there is a steep learning curve when it comes to natural hair, which is probably when you're spending out the most amount of money as far as on products. So you buy a product, you don't like it, you're like, okay, I don't like that, let me buy another one, and you buy another one, until you find out what works for your hair. And just so you know, if you buy products from, I know Target, I don't know about Walmart or other stores, but if you buy products from Target, whether it's makeup, hair, stuff, whatever, if you use it once or so and you find out you don't like it, you could take it back. So keep that in mind. That will reduce your cost as well. If you get a product and you're like, eh, this doesn't do anything for my hair, my hair's dry, you don't like it, doesn't style well, whatever the case is, take it back. I mean, it's in their policy or in their return policy. You can take it back. So FYI. But anyways, in the beginning, that's probably when you'll be spending the most money. But once you develop a regimen, which we'll talk about that in this video as well, once you develop a regimen and products that you tend to like or that you love, just know that you do not have to have a $45 deep conditioner or a $20 style or $25 shampoo and conditioner to have healthy hair. Now, keep in mind that I do not use all natural products. I mean, I have used some all natural products. I mean, I use them here and there sometimes, but that's not the focus of my regimen. I don't, I'm not, I use shampoos with sulfates and I use uh, products with silicones like I don't care I mean I have good results and I'm not that ingredient conscious but uh, and so in saying that none of the products that I currently use is over um, eight dollars I don't believe yeah I don't think any product that I use on my curly hair is over eight dollars now, if you only like to use natural products, those products do tend to be a little more expensive. But if you're spending around maybe $10, $15 on natural hair products, that's cool. But I'm just saying that don't feel like you have to spend uh, or you have to pay uh, money for luxury products to grow long, healthy hair because that's not the case. And I do have a little over 10 tips. Um, I have to check. I do have my computer right here, which I uh, took notes on. So I think I have like 14 tips. Uh, I wanted to condense it down to 10, but I felt like all of these were important. So I'm going to start, and I'm not going in any particular order. I just started taking notes on how it came to my head. So getting started. Starting with finger detangling. Finger detangling is very important. So when I first started going natural, I didn't really fully understand how to finger detangle. So I had reverted back to the comb. But I realized, but then I started to learn how to finger detangle. And that's been life for my hair. Because you, you lose a lot less hair. When you're going through your hair, you can actually feel the tangles and remove them instead of ripping them out with a comb. Also, if you do want to use a comb, just make sure you finger detangle first. I just stress that finger detangle before you use a comb if you want to use a comb. Now, occasionally I'll use a comb maybe every couple of months or so if I feel like my hair is super tangled because I want to make sure I get all of the tangles and all the shit hair out. But I also finger detangle first. So I rarely ever have to use a comb. So that's number one. Number two, low manipulation styling. So I say um, low manipulation, that's not the same thing as protective styling. That's another point. But low manipulation styling is more so you style your hair and you do not touch it. So, for instance, I style my hair once a week. Uh, occasionally, I do it more than once. That's if I have a fail or something. Usually, if I have a fail, I end up bunning it. But if I'm going somewhere and I'm like, uh, I got to do my hair again, whatever. But for the most part, I style my hair once a week and I leave it alone. The only thing I do to my hair in between one week to the next is put in a pineapple and take it down. And then towards the end of the week when it starts to get... Um, Frizzy, which I don't mind again, frizzy, but if I start to get tired of it, I'll put it in a bun. But 
I say low manipulation as in you don't want to be retwisting your hair every night or rebraiding your hair every night because just know that every time you're putting your fingers in your hair, you had a potential for breakage. So if you're twisting your hair and you're putting stress in your hair as well. So if you're twisting it every night, you're potentially causing breakage, potentially. Um, I'm guessing maybe if you do a couple big twists or so, but I just, I'm just against that altogether. For myself, style it once, leave it alone. Number three is protective styling, which includes braids, twists, wigs, buns, anything of that nature that protects your hair from the elements. Now, I'm not huge into doing braids and twists myself. I mean, I do them sometimes, but generally it's because I'm sick of my hair, not necessarily because I'm trying to grow my hair out, if you see what I'm saying. So if you see me in braids or twists, it's generally because I got sick of it. And if you're natural, you probably understand what I mean. Like some days or it just may be a week where you're like, okay, I'm so tired of my hair. I got to put it away because because I'm annoyed right now. Um, so if you see me embrace a twist, that's generally what that is. What I generally did was use buns. So when I was in college, um, of course, I was in school. I was working. I worked out as well. So I didn't have a lot of time, and I wasn't into doing extravagant styles or anything like that. So what I would do is if I wanted to wear my hair out for a week, I would do that. Then the next week, I would bun it. Then I would wear it out. Then I would bun it. Um, or sometimes I would just bun it, bun it, bun it. <laughs> but most of the time it would be worried out, bun it. And just keep in mind that if you do bun your hair, you could get breakage that way as well if you're not careful. So don't pull your hair too tight because that causes tension. Um, don't put your bun in the same spot all the time. If you're constantly wearing a top bun, you could cause breakage because your hair is constantly being pulled in. Um, the same hair is being manipulated in that direction. So if you constantly have a ponytail up here, this hair right here is constantly being pulled on with the ponytail holder and such. So that can, not saying it will, but it could cause breakage. So what one thing you want to do is make sure you're not putting your buns too tight, not causing a lot of stress on your hair, your edges, whatnot, but to move it around. So if you have a bun up here, that's cool. Wear it like that for a couple of days or for that week. The um, next week you bun it, put it down a little more, put it in the low ponytail, put it in the side, something like that because you don't want to continually stress your hair in the same spots. Number four is using a shampoo slash cleanser. So I know using shampoo is not for everybody. I tried to not use shampoo back in the day and only co-wash. That did not work out for me. And I'll leave a link down below to explain why it did not work. And it caused my hair to become dry. So um, I use shampoo, a moisturizing shampoo, once a week. And I use a clarifying shampoo about once every two to three months or so. I could always fill on my hair when I need to um, clarify my hair because my hair is becoming dry because of all the buildup. Because a moisturizing shampoo does uh, strip your hair, um, not too much because it's moisturizing. However, it is good to have a brand new clean slate of hair because over time, that little bit will build up. You know, use a moisturizing shampoo and using a clarifying shampoo is also important. And I say shampoo or cleanser because if you don't use shampoos, um, you want to still cleanse your hair, whether you're using apple cider vinegar or I know some people use like mud washes or whatever the case is, or use some type of natural uh, cleanser that you make yourself. I don't know. Use something because you do need to clarify your hair to make sure that you're getting the build up off. So number five is deep conditioning. Now, me, myself, I deep condition once a week. But if you're recovering from some type of heat, color damage, some damage that was done with styling, like say you took out some braids or twists and your hair's feeling weak and brittle and you want to get it back to, nat uh, back to normal, you might want to deep condition more than once a week. But you'll know depending on your hair. But I do mine once a week. And if you have a good deep conditioner, you can tell the difference between just conditioning your hair with the regular conditioner and with a deep conditioner. And so both regular and deep conditioners carry a negative cationic charge and are highly attracted to the positive charge of damaged hair. And so with that being said, the deep conditioners have a stronger cationic charge than daily conditioners do. Um, the daily conditioner is just with maintenance in mind so say oils that were rinsed off with the shampoo that's just putting that back in your hair and restoring your hair now a deep conditioner contains long lasting penetrable ingredients benefiting the strand from the inside out by finding the damaged areas and filling them in 
order to temporarily rebuild the hair strands. So you see why deep conditioning is important and I do suggest that you do it once a week. Even if your hair is healthy, just like my hair is healthy to maintain the integrity of your hair, you want to do it once a week. Number six is trimming your ends. Now, some people may think it's counterintuitive to trim your ends if you're trying to grow out your hair, but that couldn't be any further from the truth. Trimming your ends is extremely important. And some people um, don't agree or don't believe that if you don't trim your ends, then it will just continue to trouble with the hair strand. Some people don't believe that, but if you don't believe that, believe this. If you do not trim your ends and your ends are getting frayed, like say you have a strand. Say you have a strand of hair and it splits into two that contributes to tangling because other strands are tangling with those strands and you can definitely feel when you need a trim if you're uh, putting your fingers through your hair and your hair is uh, and your hair is fine but it's getting caught at the ends if your hair is feeling brittle at the ends you know it's time for a trim because your ends are tangling if you have a lot of little ends down here they're going to be tangling together and know that that does contribute to breakage number seven is to moisturize your hair regularly you do not want your hair to become dry and brittle because that's the number one thing we do not want as natural girls we don't want dry hair we don't want brittle hair because what that contributes to breakage so you want to moisturize your hair moisturize your hair as necessary and i said it because not everyone's hair is the same depending on your hair type um the process of your hair you may need to moisturize more or less than other people and it also depends on the climate the more dry the climate is the more you may need to moisturize your hair so just figure out um, once your hair, don't wait till your hair becomes dry. But if you feel like your hair is starting to dry out or it's not as moisturized as it was, you might want to add maybe a little spray leave in before you go to bed. Spray leave in and put some oil on top and then go to bed. Number eight is to work with your hair in sections. And working with your hair in sections is important to me um, because it makes sure that you get the product all over your hair because if you just have say your fro and you're just putting your hair like this you can't guarantee um that every that the product is touching all strands also it cuts down on a uh, time to me because um and tangles as well because if you're just if you just have your hair out and open and you're just putting product on your hair like that is just giving it the potential to tangle up with other hair but if you put it in sections it breaks it down for you it's less frustrating for you because if you just have your full head of hair it may be overwhelming so if you break it down in sections it'll be easier for you make sure you get the product on every strand and it will reduce tangles as well number nine is to protect your hair at night and after washing and when I say at night, I mean by using a silk scarf, bonnet, or satin pillowcase. And when I say after washing, it's to use a towel, or not a towel, a t-shirt, or a microfiber towel when drying your hair. And I say that because um, pillowcases, if you use a cotton pillowcase, uh, also if you use a regular towel when you're trying to dry your hair, it causes friction and can contribute to breakage. So you just want to protect your hair at all costs. Number 10 is to minimize use of direct heat. That includes flat irons, curling irons, blow dryers, anything of that sort. Now, yeah, I have my hair straight, but like I said, I have not, <coughs> I have not straightened my hair um, in six months. This December, I straightened my hair back in June, and before that, I hadn't straightened my hair in two and a half years when I was trying to grow my hair out. Because that's, um, I do have a video on how I recover from heat damage and color damage, which I'll link that down below as well. And I just, um, I really wasn't planning on going two and a half years. I was only planning on, I think, going one. But after that, I just didn't have the desire to straighten my hair. And yeah, I just didn't until June. So, you want to minimize the use of direct heat because excessive use of heat can cause um, damage, uh, as in it could um, loosen your curl pattern or you can lose it altogether. It can contribute to frizz and breakage of your hair. So if you do choose to use heat, make sure you're being extremely careful. Don't use, um, say, 450 degrees of heat. I mean, I guess if you know your hair could take that much, but I definitely would not risk it. Do not use um, extreme amounts of heat. If you're blow drying your hair, do it on cool or medium heat. Just don't feel like you have to be excessive with your heat. And make sure that you are using a heat protectant as well. If your hair is not in a healthy state, 
do not use heat. So if you're recovering from some type of damage or your hair is weak of some sort, you don't want to use heat as well. Make sure your hair is as in as good condition as possible before you use any type of direct heat. Number 11 is to stay away from chemicals. Say no to chemicals. Um, if you are natural, of course, you're staying away from relaxers and texturizers, right? But also stay away from color if you are trying to grow your hair really long and healthy. Now, I'm not saying that you can't have healthy hair with it being color. I'm just saying it's going to make it harder. You have the potential for breakage. You have potential for your hair being extremely dry, which, of course, contributes to breakage. It compromises the integrity of your hair. It's breaking bonds. I know uh, with Olaplex and other, um, what is it, um, products that they use with coloring your hair is supposed to rebuild those bonds, but mm, I wouldn't risk it. I'm just telling you that if you dye your hair, especially if you're dyeing your hair a lighter color. Now, I do dye my hair blue-black. Let's get that right. <laughs> I dye my hair blue-black. I did used to use a permanent color, and just so you know, when you're dyeing your hair black, you can still get damaged. Um, I believe I got damaged a long time ago when I was dyeing my hair blue-black, but now I use a demi-permanent, which is not a permanent hair color. So, but it lasts about the same amount of time. Because I thought back in the day, like, oh, if I use a permanent, I will never have to do it again. That's wrong because it does start to fade. So using a demi-permanent, um, I found that that lasts just as long as a permanent and it's healthier for my hair. So, um, yeah, but, but using that color is, like I said, it's breaking bonds, I'm supposed to be putting them back together. Uh, it contributes to dryness, especially if you're dyeing your hair really light. Uh, stay away from bleach. All that type of stuff. And if you notice, a lot of people, you may see on YouTube or elsewhere, where they dye their hair a light color and they love it, which is great. I mean, hey, I'm not against using color. Use it if you want to. Whatever. But a lot of the times they end up cutting that color portion off. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you get that color is, there are alternatives. As in, um, let's say if you're into wigs, you can use color, you know, experiment that way with different colors. Um, also, they have temporary colors out there, which I have one, which I've had that for a while. I've been meaning to review it. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of options out there. I know there's hair chalk. Uh, things that are not permanent on your hair and uh, do not break bonds and whatnot. So just keep that in mind if you decide that you do want to color your hair, just be cautious. Number 12 is to have a moisture protein balance. Now that's extremely important because if you over moisturize your hair, your hair could become mushy and just become tangled, hard to detangle. I've been through that. Um, I'll leave a, I just, I've been through it once when my hair was over moisturized. That was the first time my hair was ever overly moisturized. And I will leave a link down below on the FG2 step treatment that I did a review on, which um, I really do like that product, is a very intense protein treatment. So it says to do it every six to eight weeks. I do it maybe about every four to five months. Like I said, I listen to my hair. So if my hair is feeling over moisturized or if it's getting to that point, because the thing is when you're listening to your hair, you don't want to wait till it gets to that point to do something. You want to be paying attention so that you see, mm, I think my hair is becoming too moisturized or my hair feels a little weak, so I feel like it needs a protein treatment, something like that. And in between, if you're protein sensitive, um, you may not want to do that uh, as far as this uh, intense treatment because it is intense. FG also has a, a daily protein spray. I think it's a daily protein spray. Not sure what it's called. Actually, let me get it real quick. So I got it. It's the Effigy Keratin and Green Tea Restructurizer. It uh, says it uh, strengthens, instantly builds body, protects color and chemical services. Um, you're supposed to use this after you shampoo your hair. I use this every now and then. Um, so I use that every now and then if I feel like I need a boost of protein, but I don't need an intense treatment. So yeah, just keep that in mind. You want to have a balance because if you use, if you have too much moisture, your hair could become tangled and mushy and all of that is, is not a good feeling. And if you have too much protein, your hair could become dry, stiff, and brittle. So it needs to be a balance there. Number 13 is nutrition. Now it sounds cliche, but it's very important to take care of yourself as far as drinking a lot of water, making sure you're eating good foods and getting nutrition that way. If you're taking vitamins, make sure you do that as well because 
just know that your nails and your hair is a reflection of your inside. So say, for instance, if you're taking a drug test, um, one thing it could do is cut your hair and see if you've been taking drugs. Um, if you've been poisoned or somebody's been poisoned, one thing they do is they could cut your hair and see exactly where you've been poisoned. Because what's inside of you is reflected throughout your hair and your nails. So that's very important. And also exercise is important. Um exercising regularly increases circulation to your scalp um circulation all over but of course to your scalp as well which helps uh, promote healthy hair growth so number 14 is building a regimen building a regimen is extremely important because all the regimen is is um a structured routine in which you perform basic and specialized hair care practices so basically everything i said it before from shampooing deep conditioning trimming uh protein treatments um using heat however you want to incorporate that into your regimen all of that is important because that helps keep you on track helps keep you on some type of schedule so that you're not neglecting your hair so from topics one through 14 just let me know if you want me to make a more in-depth video on some of those topics because really i was just hitting on those topics trying to do it quickly I know that this video may be a little long. I was hoping that it wouldn't be, but I'm a very thorough and detailed individual. So I wanted to make it a shorter video. However, I want to be as clear as possible, as clear and thorough as possible. So hopefully I was able to convey that to you. So I hope that this video was informative, helpful, and thorough. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, thumbs up this video, make sure you like this video, comment, share. I do love to read you all's comments and reply as much as I can. So please continue to do that. To follow me on social media, I'm at, at I am Stephanie Andrea on Instagram and 40 underscore Fraser on Snapchat. Follow me there, check me out there. And yeah, so um until my next video, see ya.